Here you'll see a map uh, regarding current U.S. cases of MPX. Uh, this is as of July 22nd. Since then, there has been an increase in cases. Uh, there have been increases about 919 cases in the U.S. since last week and 25 cases in the state of Maryland. On July 23rd, the World Health Organization declared monkeypox as a public health emergency. Just want to note that as uh, Dr. Bridgers mentioned back in May, uh, when we started to see cases increase in the United States, we started working on a plan by sending out a public health advisory and looking at resources that we could use to address the issue. And uh, also to note that there were, as of July 22nd, there were 71 cases of MPX noted in the state of Maryland. In terms of an overview, I'd like to mention that anyone, regardless of gender identity or sexual orientation, can catch MPX. However, a number of the cases in the current outbreak are among specific populations. People who do not have monkeypox symptoms can't spread the virus to others, and symptoms generally last from two to four weeks. There is post-exposure vaccination recommended and um, we hope to quickly identify these cases so that it can be provided. We want to remember that although transmission is most likely to occur as a result of direct contract, contact with lesions, even crusted or scabbed lesions, transmission can occur through respiratory droplets and formites, such as linen or towels and things that are shared. Even though it is not considered a sexually transmitted infection, MPX can spread during intimate physical contact between people. Again, anyone can get MPX if they have close contact with someone who has the virus. In terms of vaccinations, Montgomery County Public Health Services has received a very limited number of MPX vaccine doses. Availability is expected to expand in the coming weeks and months. We're working with the Maryland Department of Health to ensure that vaccine is available to high risk exposures, namely those that are known contacts identified by public health um, via case investigation, contact tracing, and risk exposure assessment. Presumed contacts who may meet the following criteria may also receive the vaccine at this time, and those are that have known sexual partners within the last 14 days that are diagnosed with MPX. Also, those who have had multiple sexual partners in the past 14 days in areas with known MPX. Currently, we're working with primary care providers to identify cases and coordinate testing and referral. Close contacts may be eligible to receive, to receive post-exposure uh, prophylaxis medication, and this is on a case-by-case -case basis. We're regularly consulting with the Maryland Department of Health regarding treatment and post-exposure prophylaxis. We also continue to monitor individuals that are in isolation at home and help them understand when it is time to end that isolation. Additionally, we are providing treatment uh, to contacts of those that were exposed in other jurisdictions but currently reside in ours. For Community Outreach, we've developed an online survey. It's very similar to the survey we used for COVID-19. It's for residents interested in receiving a vaccination to protect against MPX. The survey is initially focused on the highest risk populations, as I mentioned earlier, and we expect that we'll begin to use this sometime within the next week or so. As vaccine becomes more widely available, eligible groups included in the survey will be expanded and we can offer appointments. We're also working on risk update communications and screening through the Dennis Avenue Health Center sexual health programs. Health care provider communications are HHS MPX webpage, which will include fact sheets, frequently asked questions, and other social media outreach.